Hey everyone, I wanted to take a look at Slack um, and the way that I use and love Slack uh, to keep in touch with uh, communities, discussion groups, stuff like that. Um, so I've been using Slack for a number of years now. This first started uh, with a Slack channel that Doug Belshaw and others set up. Um, it was a good place for me to go online and share. Um, I've been doing a lot of thinking and writing lately about having uh, a lot of my work be open and public, but then also having some private places where I can write and share with just a couple people. So if I build a website, I might want to share it with a couple people, a half dozen friends of mine, um, colleagues, and say, what does this website look like? Uh, does it look okay? Should I change the font? Stuff like that. Whereas I might not want to fully publish that online um, and have people question it, comment on it, ridicule it, whatever. Um, so I really find a lot of value in having a semi-private, or as I've written about in the past on my blog, a semi-permeable membrane to share and give and get feedback. Um, so uh, I also see uses for versions of a Slack channel for my classrooms. So instead of having an online discussion space in my learning management system, um, Google Classroom that I use a lot doesn't really have a good um, you know, space for students to discuss. Um, I see there's an opportunity to use Slack um, as a uh, as an addition to all of the other stuff that I use. I've written I've you know created videos in the past about Hangouts and my use of Hangouts for uh, class discussions and student feedback and questions. I could see Slack teaming up with that. In addition, in future videos, I know that Microsoft 365 has a version of Slack called Teams uh, that my institution uses. I will do a video of that uh, soon as I unpack it. But then also uh, Google is releasing their own versions um, of Hangouts Chat and then Hangouts Meet. I will have videos of those as well uh, soon. So first I want to talk about Slack and why I like Slack. So the way that Slack is organized is you'll have um, you know, one main thread for discussion. You'll notice this is a very old thread that I have set up here. So you'll notice there's a bunch of people that are in this. This is an old Slack channel um, from a couple of years ago that we set up for a couple of research colleagues of mine. So you'll see that people have individual profiles. I don't think Greg will mind if I click on his profile. Um, so I can see that he has created an account. Um, I can go over here and see uh, other things. Uh, so I can look at when he joined this, I can click on his name, and I can send him, uh, I can view his profile, I can send him a direct message, a private message. Um, this is of value to me as an educator because if this is used for my classroom, the students can ping me at any point and send me a message to ask a question. Um, I can view files that he's uploaded, I can call him, so there's a sort of a voice chat built into this. Um, and then there is an opportunity to invite him to a channel. I'll talk more about channels in a minute. So if I look at, uh, you know, Greg's profile, uh, once again, I can see if he's online right now. He is not because this Slack channel no one uses anymore. I can look at Phil's commentary here. Um, and if I want to, I could leave, you know, reactions and emoticons to his uh, commentary. I could star things. I could start a thread around this discussion. So this overall flow, if I have a lot of back and forth about this one point, I might not want that to sort of like clutter up the feed. And so what I could do is start a thread around that. Um, I can star this message. I can also pin it to the top of this back channel. Um, but there's basically a lot of text messaging back and forth. You can add in links. So I think I have a link down here that I can show. So here's a way that, you know, I, I posted in a link and it opened it up here and it expanded upon it. Um, but for the most part, what you'll get with Slack is It'll be organized around different panels or open windows where you'll have uh, different people talking back and forth. You can see if they're on or not. You can see who is saying certain things. And it's for the most part like your text messaging within a large room. That's why I love it. Um, you can add links, share links. Uh, this plays relatively well with Google Docs, which is very important for me, especially for my classes. So the way that I generally organize my materials is, first off, um, you, have can, you, you have channels um, that you use to organize the discussions. So this is our main channel for all work. 
I call the back channel different places and different Slack instances, call it different things. But I can basically say, this is the back channel. This is for like general topic discussions. Um, we also had a digital lit uh, area where people could go in and discuss content for a specific project. Um, and so this was also open uh, that anybody could join. But then I also had what I was starting up was a mastermind group. Um, and you can see there's a little lock. So what you can do is you can have uh, channels are basically groupings or discussion groupings. So the back channel is like a general discussion area. The digital lit was a, a general discussion area that anyone could go into, but people could choose to um, enter or leave that discussion area. So there's a lot of settings up here to change notifications and whether you're in or out of a group. Whereas the this mastermind group, and it could be anything, it could be group A, it could be your language and literacy faculty, but basically that mastermind group, you can make it private and only invite certain people. And so you could see that it's closed or locked off. Um, one of the other things that's nice about Slack is uh, you can see that up here someone would, uh, I would have a comment and someone would type in the username of someone. This is, uh, you know, Peggy's over here, so I can basically add Peggy's username and Peggy would get a ping or a notification in Slack to let her know that someone was talking about her. So she could sort of like not pay attention for a while and then come back and check things out. Um, one of the things that's also very interesting about Slack um, is that uh, you can see the different people that are in the discussions. It can ping you to notify you. Uh, Slack is also helpful because you can use the web browser. You can use different apps to sort of pay attention to the discussion as well. So I typically use Slack in my browser. I don't use any of the apps on my computer or the plugins for Chrome. I just go to the URL for the Slack instance or that uh, that running of Slack. Um, and then I also use my my phone. So on my Android phone or on my tablet, I'll have Slack installed and then I can get notifications right away. So other things that are cool to check out with Slack, um, it plays very nicely with GIFs. Um, so you can add links, but you can also add GIFs and add videos. It will embed the video in the discussion. Um, you can add GIFs and it'll add the GIF in there. Um, so that's nice as well. You use a little bit more multimodal text. Um, but then what's also nice is that you can see the different people that are in here. So I can add or delete uh, users from this uh, Slack instance. Um, so once again, the reason why Slack is of value to me is you can create an instance or a specific running of Slack to use as a discussion space. Um, these were all colleagues that I would typically email back and forth a lot to talk about what we need to work on and when. So the reason why I like Slack as a way to deal with that is um, at times you're going to get this information. You're going to get these signals from your colleagues at, to, at, to some extent. And I'd rather get that in this one discussion space and open it a little bit more because it can be annoying to get those emails back and forth. Um, and it can be annoying to sort of have those email discussions um, and have to keep adding and deleting people from the discussion uh, if people want to be involved or not. Um, and then, and, and most of all, you might want to have a discussion with somebody else. You know, I might be talking with Peggy and, and Michelle and someone else might be sort of like lurking a little bit and listening in to the discussion and say, hey, I also can help out. So you might want to have a discussion or a discussion room or a Slack instance with about 10 people and you're having a discussion with another colleague or two and and somebody else on the periphery might be listening in and be able to help out or lend some assistance um, in terms of a class the reason why i think that this would be of use to me is that i can create an online space where students can respond relatively quickly um, they can text back and forth if need be uh, they can text me back and forth and if need be voice chat with me or video chat with me through slack um, I already do that with Hangouts to provide student support. In terms of student discussions, it would also be helpful because it would be a space where students could go in and I could have a, a channel set up in Slack that basically said, you know, uh, water cooler is what I call it in my class, 
in my digital classes where I could say water cooler, this is any discussion, whereas these specific channels might be module one, module two, module three, and those would be open and it would be where students would submit work, ask questions, stuff like that. But then I also might have a, a channel set up within this Slack instance that's private. So it might be if I have groups of students set up, um, they might be able to go in there and chat and they could only hear from each other or, or, you know, write to each other. And then I could be in that group as well. So I can have somewhat private areas for students to talk. But then once again, if a student wanted to, they could hover over my name and send me a direct message if they had a comment or a question that somebody else wasn't addressing. Um, so once again, this is Slack. Um, I use Slack with a lot of research groups and a lot of different uh, other agendas. I'm starting to think about using it for my classes and for online discussion spaces. Um, I see a lot of opportunities to have it play well, uh, not only with my research spaces, but also my teaching spaces. Um, chances of me using Slack for my teaching are slim to none. Um, Chances of me using Slack going forward for research and research projects. If I'm using it with other colleagues, I will probably continue to do it. But for bigger projects, once again, slim to none. I'm going to, uh, the reason why I love Slack, um, I would prefer to use it. But with my students, we are primarily a Google Apps school. We're primarily a Google Apps institution. My institution also uses a lot of Microsoft products. Um, and so they also push Microsoft 365 and um, Microsoft uh, Yammer as an internal space for us to talk. Uh, I'm going to try out Microsoft 365 and I'm going to try out the Google Hangouts uh, chat and the, the Google version of Slack. Um, most likely if the Google version of Slack works well, I'm going to use that for my classes because... Technically, my students already have a Google account because of our email address system, and so they can sign right in, and then they are basically, anything that they do in that space is covered by what they're doing for the institution because the institution gave them the address. Um, so once again, this is uh, why I love Slack and the reason that I will look for Slack in the future. Um, but for what I want to do, it's really not the best use. It's not really the best for future research and future teaching. But that model, the way that it works, that's what I want. And so I'm going to continue to play with Microsoft uh, Teams, I believe it's called, and then Hangout Chat, um, and then Hangout Meet, and see if it can fill those needs. And hopefully Google sticks with their tools, but that's another talk for another day. So hopefully this little tour, this brief overview of Slack and why I love Slack was helpful. Please leave a comment and let me know what works and what doesn't work and what makes sense and what doesn't make sense. And if you haven't already, please subscribe to the channel. Uh, love to have you stick around here. So hopefully you enjoy this little look at Slack.